So good morning to everybody, the very elite audience from acoustics are sitting here. I am going to present a paper on acoustical studies of rock cut cave Hindu temples. And uh, according to geological, uh, geological survey of India, these rocks belongs to the Dianetic and Genesis. Genesis, that's high grade metamorphic rocks. And it is a very, very preliminary study of the properties of the cave temples. Cave means that's a natural caves converted into temples. So these are the two cave temples. We are lucky to have these two temples at Bangalore, one at the, the heart of the city of the Bangalore itself, and another the suburb of uh, Bangalore city, that is Pudimal. These are the, these are the, uh, that was the outside uh, view of the structures and these are the internal views of the two caves. And the acoustics, as we know very well, plays a very important role in Hindu temple worship and as we know very well, along with the Vedic chanting, the conch shells, other instruments are also used to enhance the devotee's concentration. And uh, as we know from the physics and the recent uh, developments in the sound system, especially acoustics, they do have a characteristics of pitch, duration emphasis, uniformity, and proximity. And uh, in the addition, uh, the, it's already been told that it enhances the worship concentration of the devotees. So, in a general way, what is the temple? What we mean the temple is, it has got three chambers. One is Dharmagraha, another is Ardhamantapa, another is Mahamantapa. The, the Dharmagraha, the idol of the deity will be placed and the Vedic performance will be having the priest, head priest mostly, he will be chanting the Vedic mantras with respect to God, a particular deity. And then at the uh, Adhamantapa, both the chanting and the bell sound or the instrumental sounds are also played. And in uh, Mahamantapa, the prayer, the general public will be playing and that is followed by even the instruments also. Yes, that is the thing. So here is a beautiful one cave temple called as Gavi Ganga Dhaneshwara in Karnataka, that is Bangalore. It belongs to 9th century. The architecture belongs to 9th century. So here is the uh, top view of the temple. It has got three small temples inside. One is Gangadhareshwara, another is Parvati Devi and another is Durga Devi. The very speciality of Indian architecture itself is, especially for temples, they have got Pradakshina Pathas. And you can go, uh, the general public are allowed to go through Pradakshina Pathas. After praying uh, yeah, the, by serial one by one, etc. Likewise, the, the, the as we are already talking about uh, the dimensions, I need not explain the things. Uh, it is already there with the margin of the volumes that we have calculated. Yes, next. So here is Dr. Prasad himself is conscious uh, playing and at the Adhamantapa and the recording is done at the Adhamantapa itself. So please read that. Here, uh, distinguishedly here, the reverberation sound and uh, the 
uh, a second uh, level of our recording is from the anthematography itself, but uh, as I have told you earlier, the, uh, the recording was done through the production of Katha. You can very distinctly uh, find the differences of reverberations here. Yeah. Please. Yeah, the, the production of Katha that is referring is the circumambulation. That is, you go around like the arrow shown on the right side diagram. So the devotees, after the worship, they go around the temple. So the, the sound is made in the main hall, but the recording is done in the circumambulation path, which is all full of rocks. So that's what you are about to listen, the recording in the rock. And our, uh, to our luck, we don't have any So it's like the whole thing is like a resonating chamber. You are playing the conch shell right in the main hall, but the sound is simply going through all the available spaces in the chamber. Yes, this uh, we only took it only at the uh, Ganga Dharishwara small temple only. There are the contributions of other two samples or other two temples also, which we may go uh, in our further observations. So now coming to the suburb uh, cave temple which is another very unique one and it is at Ufanimango and uh, we can see the beauty of this uh, temple is in the form of pada or the feet eh? almost and we have got uh, the temples uh, temple architecture inside, they have made it as Darbhagun Hall, uh, Adhamantapa and the main hall, they are at the right side of the door entrance, you can see in that part. Again, we have done three, uh, two experiments, one with conch shell and another with uh, directly by chanting the, uh, chanting by these great people sitting at the Adhamantapa and uh, 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 whatever, yes, please play, play the first one. Now here what you should observe is the console is played for some time, then it stops. But then you will see an extended echo uh, coming through the, uh, the long portion of the cave, which is like a resonating pipe organ. So that you see very clearly, or hear clearly.
and you can see the clarity and the loudness. In the evaluation of increase in sound pressure level in Mahamantapa at Ramalingeshwara, that was the first temple, this is the second temple that we could see the source at Ardhamantapa and as we have already told and we have heard the uh, beautiful sound of Kanshal and the uh, mantras at the visible end of 45.7 meters. The predicted delta L according to the formula it is 36 BBA and the measured delta L is 38.2 BBA. Again the first spectral uh, analysis is showing when we when we just uh, shank from uh, when we produce the sound from Shanka at the uh, at the Ardhamantapa measure level is 110 dBA and F0 is again 300 Hz. The same in Ardhamantapa recorded in Mahamantapa at a distance as we have shown here it is 40.6 uh, meters and that measure level is also F0 equal to 300 hex. So, uh, concluding my uh, things, it is seen that the acoustic plays an important role in Hindu worship spaces, no doubt, particularly has significant effect in particularly in cave temples. We can very easily go ahead with the uh, many observations which we are doing just, uh, we are, uh, I have seen a more sensitive observations can be taken up further. It is observed that the Dabhagraha, Ardhamantapa and Mahamantapas are highly reverberant and they contribute to the acoustical enhancement of the spiritual experiences, particularly spiritual experiences of the devotees. In this preliminary study, it is observed that the highly reflective environment of cave temples provides an amplification to the chants and the sounds of various instruments such as conchal which we have heard. Further studies are required to understand the acoustical behavior of the rock at Hindu Dev temples. Thank you very much. And we to our Gurujis, two Gurujis who have initiated this before 26 years. Uh, one Sri Samarth Narayan Maharaj of Haryar and uh, the Guruji of uh, Sri Prasad Ji and we are carrying out with their blessings these experiments and he is there, he has worked, worked and worked since from 15 days, yesterday also up to 11.30 we have worked on these things just to produce the things. Thank you very much for patience here. I especially, I especially thank who is a grandson of my, uh, grandson of me and I thank all the uh, governmental people who have, which has become very harder nowadays if you, you, you cannot take any uh, observations in especially archaeological uh, structures and uh, I, I am indebted to those departmental people. Thank you very much. Thank you. One or two questions. Uh, what was the reverberation time? Did you measure the reverberation time? Huh? Reverberation time. Did you measure? Huh. Did you measure reverberation time? RT. Up. No, we calculated based on the rock absorption quotient. We couldn't measure, but it was very, very high. Something like 3.5 seconds. That was the surprising thing for us. Because 3.5 seconds. I think it must be higher. It should have been much higher. Uh, because mm -hmm. we did one measure. No, we, we spent, for each area, for the phantom phantom, we got one. 
But the half hole we got another one because the volume, the shape is different. The volume here changes. So we got anywhere from 3.5 up to 5.4 on the main hall. So we got the three values. Then we also calculate the coupled uh, effect. So, uh, so it is a very high value. And uh, according to that is one of the questions that we still have to you know, answer because we know the guideline says for speech uh, 1.1 second or something, but here it is 5 seconds and still we are able to get a, a good clarity of the chant. Uh, you know, those who know the chant can clearly uh, understand intelligibly both that the source and the receiver. So uh, maybe it is the structure of the, the cave temple. Uh, uh, I mean, that's something that. Yeah, it should also maybe that. consider measure EDT and RT and okay. compare. Right. Yeah, maybe yeah. 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 that's the reason. EDT is short and right. RT is long. Right. That's, so that's what we are Yeah, intelligibility as well as good feeling of long information. Yeah. Yeah. There's an interesting uh, book on the architecture of these temples written by the Lord Mayan. Uh, when book called Agama Sastra. All these temples, Shiva temples, which works on these Agamas, yeah. they are built in a star called Tirvare. So when you recite in that star Om, the structure of Om is in such a way that uh, the entire Om dialect is being designed. They use the same dialect and mind built the first temple. I mean, in the Ram temple, in the cave temple? In the cave, every temple. Even a rock temple or a cave temple. If you visit the temple in Sri Lanka, which was built by Ravana, uh, even today it is in the structure of home. Yeah, I mean we have to, we, have to, we didn't find much uh, acoustic information in Adam Shastra. I mean we think, of course maybe the... Let me discuss in the... Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.